in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And welcome everyone to St. Andrew's Cathedral tonight, a cold and damp night outside, but warm in here, and we come together to give praise and thanks to God for 25 years of the Cardinal Winning Pro-Life Initiative. That's a great achievement. So many people, as we know, have been helped due to that initiative which started just 25 years ago. So we give praise and thanks to God for that. Let's, Let's begin, begin our Mass, though, especially during the seasons of Lent, conscious of our failings and our weaknesses, and once more ask God to show us love and compassion. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my mysterious fault. Therefore I ask, blessed be the ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. O God, the Father of every good gift, we confess that all we have and are comes down from you. Teach us to recognize the effects of your boundless care and to love you with a sincere heart and with all our strength. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, Lord, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. reading from the prophet Isaiah. Islands, listen to me. Pay attention, remotest peoples. The Lord called me before I was born. From my mother's womb, he pronounced my name. He made my mouth a sharp sword and hid me in the shadow of his hand. He made me into a sharpened arrow and concealed me in his quiver. He said to me, you are my servant Israel, in whom I shall be glorified. While I was thinking, I have toiled in vain, I have exhausted myself for nothing. And all the while, my cause was with the Lord, my reward with my God. I was honoured in the eyes of the Lord, my God was my strength. And now the Lord has spoken. He who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, to gather Israel to him. It is not enough for you to be my servant, to restore the tribes of Jacob and bring back the survivors of Israel. I will make you the light of the nations so that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord.
you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The apostles said to the Lord, Increase our faith. The Lord replied, Were your faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, Be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Which of you, with a servant ploughing or minding sheep, would say to him when he returned from the fields, Come and have your meal immediately? Would he not be more likely to say, Get my supper laid, make yourself tidy, and wait on me while I eat and drink? You can eat and drink yourselves afterwards. Must he be grateful to the servant for doing what he was told? So with you, when you have done all you have been told to do, say, We are merely servants. We have done no more than our duty. The Gospel of the Lord. When the angels appear to the shepherds, at Bethlehem to announce the birth of Jesus. They say, they bring you news of great joy. And of course, the birth of any child should be an occasion of great joy. But we do know that when some people are told that they are pregnant, it doesn't bring them joy. It brings them consternation and anxiety and worry. It may be, perhaps, 
that this pregnancy has not been planned or even wanted. And so that young woman suddenly discovers that her life is changed. Her plans for the future, her career may have to change. Or maybe she's not in a, a relationship, a proper relationship with someone. Maybe it's been a casual relationship that resulted in this pregnancy. Maybe it's been an illicit relationship. Either way, this good news of the creation of human life suddenly becomes bad news and a cause of worry and anxiety. And it can seem as though perhaps dreams of the future have now been shattered. Sadly, our society proposes a simple solution, and that is to have an abortion, to snuff out that young life in the womb. I don't know when our society will come to appreciate that you cannot solve any problem by the taking of human life. And of course, the pro-life movement has been very active over the years in trying to point out the worth and dignity of human life at every stage of its development, including at its earliest stage in the womb. But that, of course, is not enough. And Carl Rubening recognized that 25 years ago when he set up the pro-life initiative, as did, of course, the Sisters of Life when they started up as well, that you have to do more than that. It's not just pointing out to society the value, the worth, the dignity of human life, even its very early stages of growth, but also you have to help and support those for whom this pregnancy might well be seen as a catastrophe, as a difficulty, as a problem, as a challenge to all their hopes and dreams. And you have to be able to support that person, not just throughout the pregnancy, and support that life, not just until it is born, but even once that life is born. We have to continue to support those in need. We have to value human life at all its stages. And of course, it's in recognizing the dignity of the human life in the womb that imposes upon us an obligation to go out of our way to help those in need, to help those who are struggling with a pregnancy, just as it imposes upon us after birth to help those who struggle, particularly those who struggle with poverty, those who struggle with difficulties in life, because people can seem, can feel very isolated, particularly single parents can feel very isolated by society. And it's a struggle hard enough for two people to bring up a child, so much harder for one. So in recognizing the value of the unborn child, the dignity of the child's humanity. We recognize the dignity of all humanity and the value of all life and how we must take, not just proclaim that value, but we must take practical steps to support human life at every stage of its development. In the first reading, the prophet says that God has called him by name even in his mother's womb. For all of us, our conception was the very first moment of our existence. May we continue to promote the Cardinal Winning Pro-Life Initiative. May we continue to uphold the dignity of all human life and to support that human life from conception to birth and from birth through all subsequent generations to the end.
Let us now present our petitions to the Lord our God. For Francis, our Pope, William, our Archbishop, and all bishops, priests, deacons, and religious, that in their every word and action, the gospel of life may be proclaimed with joy and compassion. We pray to the Lord. Amen. For all those struggling with pregnancy just now, through fear, pressure, or ill health, that they may have the courage and necessary support to choose life. We pray to the Lord. Lord. For all those who are sad at the loss of a baby, whether through stillbirth, miscarriage or abortion, that they may experience the support and compassion they need in order to grieve. We pray to the Lord. Lord. For all those whose lives are wounded by the trauma of abuse or neglect in all its forms, that they may know the healing and peace that comes only from God. We pray to the Lord. Amen. For an end to all abortion and all medical practices which destroy human life, and for all our politicians and those in the legal and medical professions, that they may have the courage to bring about change and the wisdom to know how. We pray to the Lord. Amen. For us, brothers and sisters in the Ukraine, torn apart by the ravages of war and the fear of what is to come, and for refugees everywhere, uprooted from all they know and love, that they may be welcomed with genuine concern for their dignity and flourishing. We pray to the Lord. Lord. For all those who are sick and for all those who have died, especially Cardinal Winning, and all those who have shown us along the way the beauty and wisdom of the gospel of life, May they enjoy eternal happiness. We pray to the Lord. Amen. Loving God and Father, look upon your children gathered here and all our brothers and sisters who are in need and grant our prayers through your graciousness and kindness through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, pray brothers, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. For the gifts you have bestowed, O Lord, we offer you the sacrifice of praise, humbly begging that what you have conferred upon us in our unworthiness we may give back to the glory of your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company of the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so from the rise of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, and they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he is betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension to heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Granted, we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed, the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Andrew, St. Bungo, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you, have their passing from this life your kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. I will be dead on earth as it is in heaven. We must this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And it is not into temptation, but to us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we will be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not in our sins, but in the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, 
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy. You should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. pray. O God, who have given to us a spiritual food, the saving sacrament of your Son, which we have offered you in thanksgiving, grant that being strengthened by gifts of courage and joy, we may serve you more devotedly and be worthy of still further blessings. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, it's been wonderful to be able to celebrate this Mass with you this evening. It's great that this has been my kind of first official engagement since I became Archbishop to join you for this initiative. And to, um, it's quite amazing to think it was 25 years ago when Cardinal Winning uh, started the Pro-Life Initiative. To me, it still seems quite kind of fresh. Um, and I suppose uh, uh, I'm really grateful for all the good work that's been done uh, during that time, helping so many people. If you don't have to rush away, then there will be a cup of tea over in the air hall immediately after Mass. And there will also be the opportunity as you leave the church to uh, make a financial contribution to the Pro-Life Initiative if you feel able to do so. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.